phenomenal, phenomenal job. Um, I love the way that the film really explores the friendship between Dr. King and um, Rustin. And even though it was complex at time, it was very beautiful. What do you think that um, viewers can learn from their friendship and speak a little bit about the complexities within that? Well, it's you, I, the thing which is what I really enjoy is finding and capturing a young MLK. He, he was very young, even when he died, he was very young. But seeing him at the beginning and seeing him make a mistake and, and betray and hurt his friend, and then seeing them find the grace to reactivate the closeness that they felt, and then later on, redeeming the earlier mistake and honoring him. And I love seeing the growth of that. I love, I love, I love seeing the grace and the forgiveness and the heart of that. And I and 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 that I find very moving and very powerful. And I think it's something that we need to see more of. People, people, you know, there's you know, and and uh you know, Ella Baker says to him, you know. He betrayed you one time and you can't forgive him and you need to do this. Go win your friend back. And that sense of valuing those who we care deeply about and forgiving those who we care deeply about and then demanding those who we care deeply about be better versions of themselves. So all of that I find very moving and very important and very powerful. What do you think um, about Dr. King and Rustin made them such a dynamic duo? Because from watching the film, it really seemed like what one lacked, the other one had. Exactly, exactly. And I, I think they, I think there was a tremendous amount of respect. And I think there was, there was a, I, I, I think that they were each secure enough in their own power that they could make themselves available to the to what the other person's ideas were and, and the potency of, of their personality. And, and Baye was very close to the family and, you know, knew, 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 knew the kids and, and was a part of that family. And I love, I love that those dynamics exist in families, in black families all the time. And that somebody who isn't a blood relative is treated like one. And, and that I really enjoyed as well. Um, what I also loved was, you know, I just love everything about the civil rights movement and seeing what came out of that. And we're all, well, not weird, but there's always a lot of comparison about the movement, the movements of today versus the movements of yesteryear and what this generation is doing wrong or, you know, could be doing better. What do you think that um, some of the movement, some of the movements, whether it's Black Lives Matter or LGBTQ plus rights and that advancement and um, things of that nature, what can they learn from the movements of the well, I don't want to get into specifics about what they can learn, but one of the things that I think is really fascinating about the movie is one, the details of the organization, the details of pulling something off, that that you know, that the, the, the minute details matter. Everything matters when you're pulling something to together and that you and that your vision is not just the event, but what happens after the event. And and, and how is that connected to the cause? And also expanding and opening up who you include in in in, in your journey so that therefore you are you are you are bringing together an arsenal of as many different kinds of people as you possibly can because that's how change happens. There, 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 there can be a tendency to only surround yourself with everybody who is like you, but I think that, that, if, that, that we need to understand, which, which, you know, which I've been saying a lot, it needn't look like you to be about you. And that there were, I, th I think there were so many extraordinary moments that happened, you know, in the following George Floyd's death, where you saw all these people speaking out and coming together. And that I think, expanding upon that and magnifying that and intensifying that, I think is very important. And finally, um, obviously back then there was, um, you know, kind of an agenda to suppress Rustin's work because of his sexuality, but now he's finally getting the just due that he deserves. How are you hoping that this film, you know, expands um, everyone's knowledge?
Well, I, you know, it's you know, it, a whole lot of people are saying the word Rustin. <laughs> you just did it, you know, and, and that's happened, you know. There needs to be a stamp. There needs to be a holiday. There needs to be a whole series of things. There, you know, I there it, we need to study him. And, and, and it's very interesting because we're at a time where people are trying to undefine history. And to me, the response to that is to magnify history and to magnify people like like him and understand that he that he is not just should not just be owned by people who are like him he should be owned by the entire country hi oh we can go Okay. First of all, a pleasure to meet you and speak with you today. Thank yeah. you so much for speaking with Flavity. Of course, you're very welcome. Now, you did an amazing, amazing job in this role. You really transformed into the character. Obviously, um, there's a resurgence of Rustin as a civil rights icon that's going on right now. But for you, how familiar how familiar were you with his with his work and his legacy? I was a bit more familiar than most. Uh, and most people don't know who By Rustin is. And and people who actually work in extraordinary organizations today, like someone I ran across recently. I was like, who does work in this arena about, you know, <laughs> you know, about like, you know, making sure people have their rights and all. I'm like, wait, how do you not know? Because by Rustin was marginalized in the history books. And I know that when he first came across my mind was about second year of university, second or third year of university when I joined the African American Student Union. And his name came up. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. Who was that? And then finding out he was the architect of the March on Washington and he, you know, was very close friends with Martin Luther King. And I just thought, well, why don't we know more about him? But then of course, I went a little further. Why don't we know more about Ella Baker? Why don't we know more about A. Philip Randolph? Why don't we know more about, you, you name it. You know what I mean? The, the, the list goes on and on. So I think um, these stories are starting to take more um, center stage uh, where they belong, you know, I think, which is great. You know, he has a full story, a fullness and in a, in a great impact in his life. And finally, the lights are all shining on him, which is great, and I feel very proud to be uh, a small part of it. Now, obviously, as part of his story, um, his affiliation with Dr. King, and they had a very beautiful yet complex friendship. Um, what did you like about the, the friendship between them, and what do you think can be learned today from their relationship? Oh, what a beautiful question. I think that they had such a beautiful brotherhood, and it was pure. And it was, um, I think the thing that my, my co-star and I, Amel Amin, we talked about as we were researching both of these men and, then, and also their friendship, was they, were, they had that, that intimate brotherhood that challenges, I think, other men mm -hmm. at times. I think they were very probably affectionate with each other and very, very, very comfortable in each other's skin. I think that they were cut from the same cloth in many ways. Yet, you know, I, I think especially in the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. You may not have, if you saw uh, a relationship between um, uh, a cisgendered, you know, heterosexual man and, you know, an openly gay man, you thought, oh, there has to be sex in between. You just, you, you could not even imagine that it was something more, like something more high-minded, just about, <laughs> you know, <laughs> thoughts and brotherhood. ideas and just brotherhood, yeah. and that's it. But that's the world putting that on. So I think they had a very beautiful, gentle uh, relationship, actually, um, that was full of respect and love, you know. By God, he inspired Dr. King with his um, with his ideology about passive resistance through his teachings, through teachings of Gandhi, you know. So, which which is quite beautiful that you they had this teacher student, um, and he really sort of like even the idea of like the moment of the march on Washington, um, sort of like elevated Dr. Martin Luther King to superstardom. You know, before the march, he wasn't a superstar, but he was made a superstar in this moment. You know, and that was, and I think Byron Rustin had a lot to do with it. Now, how does your own personal and professional story and your trajectory, how does that relate to someone like Rustin? Another great question. <laughs> I think in many ways, I had to find, the beautiful thing is that you have to find what part of the character lives in you. And I could say it. I could say that I think I've been a workhorse in the industry for a long time, and probably with, without a lot of, you know, acknowledgement because you just committed to doing the work. That's what Bayer did. He was like, he may not get the shine. He said, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about getting the work done. He shows up, undoes the tie, rolls up his sleeves. Let's get the work done. Okay, oh, they want to you, send you to the Oval Office? Great, fine. Let me go pick up the trash. <laughs> you know? So I think I can see that part of myself, to be honest, in, in Rustin, because I think for a long time I realized I, th I thought that that's what I had to do. And, um, but then, you know, 
life and is wild and funny and then suddenly you know you're myself and Rustin I think are sort of being acknowledged for some of the things that we've been a part of and it's just you know it's just I've been working for a long time and sometimes it's nice to get a little acknowledgement and it's beautiful and I'm really happy that it's coming through Bayard because he deserves all of it. Well you're definitely getting your flowers now. How are you hoping that this film extends um, Rustin's legacy? In an extraordinary way. If by by the time you know this is on Netflix and seen in what 238 countries mm -hmm. I want to make sure that no one ever says who was by Rustin, and I feel like we did a great job. And then it'll be the others that I want people to know more about too, countless others, because the they were just icons. the hidden icons. They were just ordinary people doing extraordinary things.